and welcome back to Your Rejoin 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of videos. If you haven't seen any of the other videos, uh, definitely go check them out. It's 120 things that I learned as a student of computer science at the University of Regina. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about yet another log logical fallacy, uh, the fallacy of the beard. And unfortunately, I don't have a beard to show you today. Uh, many of my other videos, uh, I have had one, so you can go check out one of those to get a kind of before and after beard shot here. Uh, but th this uh, logical fallacy uh, is going to be uh, similar to another another logical fallacy. So when uh, the video for that one is released, you'll probably want to watch both of them back to back or pretty close to back to back. Uh, that's the slippery slope fallacy. We'll talk about that one a little bit more. Uh, but just to, to be clear, uh, that one is going to be, uh, we're, we're going to, a lot of people are going to uh, use these in almost replaceable ways, uh, but we're going to treat them different for the purposes of this series, uh, and we'll get into why in a bit. But, uh, so the, the idea of the fallacy is uh, that, uh, to ask, well, when does someone have a beard, or specifically someone like me? You know, you see a little bit of stubble here. This is not a beard, it's stubble. Uh, I clearly do not have a beard today. I have had a beard in the past. But you could ask the question, you know, when does, or do you, you know, does Jeff have a beard right now? And uh, it, right now, being a couple of seconds past, a uh, couple of seconds ago, I didn't have a beard then. And yet the, the, the hair on my face was growing. So you're, you're getting more hair there, but it's still not a beard. So you could say the same about, well, in a couple minutes, I'm gonna have more hair here but it's still not going to be a beard. And in a couple of minutes, you could say the same thing. Uh, and in a couple of minutes, you could say the same thing. So therefore, uh, by some kind of a logical extrapolation of sorts, you could say, well, I'm never going to have a beard because every couple of minutes, you could ask me the same question and the hair's going to grow a little bit. And it, it's always going to be that, you know, yes, I, I don't have a beard. Well, of course, that's not true because eventually you're going to look at me and go, well, actually, Jeff, you do have a beard, uh, just like you had a beard in previous videos. So there's this difference between you know, not having a beard at all and being completely clean shaven and having a full beard. And it's not really clear when exactly you transition from one to the other. And this is kind of uh, a, a problem because there, there really isn't a point uh, where you can just point to and say, you know, at 30 you know, hours and five seconds after Jeff's shaves, he has a beard. Um, that, you know, you could look at me after 30 hours without shaving and, and make that call, but that, that's kind of an, uh, a really strange way of defining when a beard occurs. And it doesn't seem to have uh, the same kind of weight that other kinds of things you could say uh, might have. So the, the fallacy of the beard is more, more generally applied, where you have two extremes, uh, say X and Y, similar to you know, between the clean shaven and has a beard. Uh, and where there's not a clear way to differentiate when the transition happens between the two. And the conclusion you draw is that there's no difference between these two. Well, of course, there is a difference between having a beard and not having a beard. You could even say things like, well, you go through more shampoo. You know, you have to keep the beard clean, otherwise it itches and it, you know, it gets in the way. And, you know, some people, you know, like having a beard and some people don't like having a beard. Uh, but it's a different experience to, to kind of brush up against someone who has a beard versus who doesn't have a beard. So there's clearly a difference between the two. And yet, there's no way to really say when the beard starts uh, in a way that's going to satisfy everyone. And so the world is full of these examples of this uh, kind of thing where there is a, there's a transition or a continuum between two types of things and where the transition happens and there's no way to really clearly or cleanly separate the two. Uh, and yet we have to separate the two because in order to live and in order to survive, we have to make choices about uh, and between these extremes and these, these possibilities. Uh, and so we end up usually making kind of arbitrary uh, very human or legal uh, definitions that split uh, between these two extremes or between these two possibilities. But you can always look at these extremes or look at these decisions and question the validity of where the decision was made. One example of this is the question of when does human life begin? Uh, 
there's a lot of people who uh, would have a problem with, uh, I, I guess, certain kinds of life uh, being extinguished. Uh, and you, you, if you take it to one extreme, you could say, well, you know, it, it, if, if we're uh, agreeing that it's okay to, say, a abort some living thing or to, to, to kill some living thing, and we're not going to make the judgment call until, say, the age of 30, because right now there's there's a significant percentage of people who are of the age of about 30 who are still living with their parents and still not fully independent of their parents. And you, some might even say they don't, you know, if you go right back to the, you know, what is life and what is the meaning of life, do they really have a life? Well, it, it, the extremists would argue, no, they don't have a life because they're not fully independent and they haven't achieved this full independence and humanness uh, that they, they may be capable. And so, you know, is it reasonable to abort a 30-year-old Pyrofox Apache helicopter or someone who thinks that they are? Uh, is that acceptable? No, not really, because that's a human being. They have human rights. Our, leg our legal system would certainly not find it acceptable to abort a 30-year-old, you know, grown man. Uh, and yet, there's no complete, or there, there's a very, it's very difficult to draw uh, a, a line at any point before that, because a day prior to that, he's still a fully grown person, he's still a living thing. A day before that, he's still a living thing, he still has properties that you could define as living. Going all the way back to, you know, sperm and egg, and even before that, to just sperm or egg, or even before that, to the cells that make up uh, and produce sperm and egg. Uh, at every single step between those two extremes, you can make the case, you can make the argument that the, you know, there is life there, and that the, the life is sacred or the sperm is sacred, uh, that there's, it, it is worth, you know, protecting. So there's, there's graduations between all of these extremes, uh, and that it, the difference is always between a matter of degree. Another example of this is the uh, urban development. Uh, specifically in New York, there was a forest that bordered on the city of New York, and every couple of years in the 70s, there would come a point uh, where the, um, the, the the city hall would, would go to the people of the city and say, okay, here's, here's an example of, you know, we want to make uh, a new uh, shopping mall or a new neighborhood, and so we're just going to cut down a couple of trees, and we're just going to cut down a little bit of this forest, and so it's not going to be the the you know, too damaging to this forest, because there's this huge forest here, and it's a very healthy forest, a lot of wildlife in there, you can go hunting, you can go fishing, it's not a big deal if we just have to cut down a little bit of these trees. And for the most part it wasn't, uh, but over the 30 to 50 or even 70 years, the forest got smaller and smaller and smaller, until the point where it was barely the size of a small city park. Uh, and so, at some point, you, you transition from this, you know, really healthy living thing, this, or, or this, 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 forest that had uh, remediating properties that would filter the water to this barely surviving, uh, needing to be uh, you know, continually replanted city park. Uh, and so there, th at any given point you could dispute, hey, you know, we, we should stop this development, uh, and yet it was pushed back. And so there, there was this problem in defining the, 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 the boundary point between these two extremes. Now you can deal with this with something called fuzzy logic. But I'm not going to get into fuzzy logic here because that's kind of an advanced topic. And a, another way of approaching this, there, there's a, a good couple of ways in the field of pattern classification and pattern detection. But again, that's an advanced topic. We're not going to get into that. But the important part is to note that this is a problem and to admit that whenever you have one of these situations where there's this uh, continuum between two properties, that there is a problem and that any situation or any solution you come up with is going to be roughly arbitrary uh, and that someone is going to have to make a decision and that it, it at best is going to work for now or in the current uh, political or current context uh, and you're always going to be able to question that. And so, you know, don't be drawn into defending the fact that you had to make a decision at all because these, these situations only allow you to make an arbit arbitrary decision. There's really uh, very few of them that it is acceptable to be on one extreme or the other, uh, and that it'll allow you to, to be on one extreme or the other, uh, and, and still remain more or less correct. Again, that would be the same as you know allowing the murder of 30-year-old pyrofoxes. It's not something that most legal systems are going to put up with. Uh, 
Uh, so don't be drawn into defending the fact that a decision has to be made. Okay. And don't be allow yourself to be tricked that the decision that you made or that someone else made is necessarily permanent in the way that the universe works. Yeah. You can usually define the, the boundary at a different point and still make things work and still uh, you know, reasonably conduct your affairs or, or, or make your argument, etc. cetera. Uh, but at the same point, someone has to make a decision, whether that's you or not. It has to be uh, something that we, we, we come up with, we work with, we uh, live our lives with and around, uh, but that decision usually has to be made at some point. So, you know, here we are. We, we you know, we, we can caution you against treating these two things, having, you know, a beard and not having a beard, are clearly different things. Don't treat them as if they're the same thing. Uh, but again, keep in mind that the, the transition between the two, like the transition between many things, is going to be subtle and complicated, and you're going to have to come up with rules on some level to define which you're going to accept for any given context. Uh, you can look back to previous videos for discussion about rules. You can look at, say, the Occam's Razor uh, video from a couple of videos ago. Uh, that's going to be one way of dealing with these rules. And you're going to want to think about how the rules come into effect, how they're going to impact your, your life and the, the situation that you're, you know, the political situation, etc. But in general, again, uh, you're going to have to come up with them, so be prepared for them. So, uh, if you have any questions, uh, does anyone in the audience have questions today? Okay. No questions? All right. Uh, again, this, this video will be posted, and uh, feel free to comment anywhere that this video is posted. Uh, see you next video. Talk to you then.